Boy, we're going to get you a promotion. Thank you. Big thanks to our director there, running camera. <laughs> Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. And uh, I think by now this place that you see me has become quite familiar. I think in my 28 years of doing this television show, this may be close to the most that I've been to of one place in history. You guys have just made history. Really? Usually, I mean, you know, most places I've been to one or two times because mm -hmm. I just spread it out. But see, when you come into Mount Hermon Ministries, it's always making history. So I'm so proud that uh, I think I may have been here maybe six times now. I'm going back to. Uh, For the fun days. Yeah, and I'm going back to uh, Adopt the Child, One Church, One, one, church, one Child. See, I remember yes. that because I had to come and work right. it. So uh, I think you guys are around six or seven, okay? And by the end of this year, you might get up to 10 because okay. you're, you're not sitting around, okay? Play. Whenever you need me, I'm here, yeah. right? Awesome. Okay, so we're here at Mount Hermon Ministries. I'm here with my friends and uh, got a great symposium that's going to be taking place tonight, I, the, the Women's Night, I mean, a woman's word, the virtual symposium on racism in her words. I'm, I'm glad we got that written up there. I won't have to try to remember it. I'm uh, so thrilled to be here tonight. Uh, the ladies are going to be on stage. We'll get a chance to talk to the first lady and, and the pastor here at Mount Hermon Ministries and sort of catch up with them in the virtual world. So without further ado, let's get right over here. We got uh, Reverend Dr. William Glover and we got the first lady, Cheryl Glover, right here. Welcome to Leap is Live. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on being a historic uh, moment. <laughs> well, we, we will tag that. <laughs> we and welcome to uh, the campus of Mount Hermon Ministries once again. Right. And one of the things I like about coming here now not that I didn't like coming in for, but for covering these particular events, I have a general idea what to expect. We got, you guys have this set up, you say, that's where Lee is gonna be. And it's just so uh, encouraging for the community to be able to watch these virtual shows and get educated in the process. Tonight, Cheryl, we're gonna get a chance to hear the ladies talk. Yes, All yes. Right, tell us about how that concept came into reality. Well, actually, it happened because, of course, we know uh, Dr. Glover has been doing a, a, a few of the symposiums, and he's had different t types of people based on their backgrounds and experience. Um, and, of course, we've had the marches. Uh, the millennials have had their time. But I had not seen anything locally where the women had the opportunity to share their uh their perspective and okay. their voice. Right, and I don't want to spoil all the thunder on that because I'm going to talk to you one-on-one -on, -one on that, uh, but it's a good opportunity for me to get a, a couple together here. Uh, Pastor Glover, what you've, we've been, Cheryl has been here at all the other ones mm -hmm. working behind the scenes and people need to know that she's working just as hard <laughs> as the pastor. What had the general feedback, the lad, I think we've done two so far. Yes. Uh, has it been encouraging what you've heard back? I know I've seen all the comments online. Absolutely. The original one dealing with the uh, coronavirus and the response of the African American church and clergy, we had a tremendous response uh, to that. Uh, lots of engagement the night of, of course, and uh, afterwards. And coming off of that particular one, what really blessed me, the clergy were really excited and they wanted to know when were we going to do this again. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, I had not planned beyond that original one, uh, but certainly it uh, felt like we touched on a niche and uh, this platform works for having high level discussion on some important issues. You see the pandemic well, is, is certainly a lemon, but it's being turned into a lemonade in terms of how you're managing this time because none of this would never have happened. There are certain things I'm doing with the television show and in my life that I never would have happened, would never would have happened had it not been for the the pandemic, so it's like turning lemon into uh, lemonade, and it's a, a great benefit to the community because you guys can now sit back, you got enough time, you can sit back, people at home, even if it rains out here this evening, which I think it may, people are gonna be looking at it online anyway. And so it's allowing you to sit back and say, here's some things I've been wanting to get around to, or we need to get around to, and we can do it in a relaxed way and not rush into it, well thought out, looks like Cheryl that you have a, uh, a world-class panel of a wide range of different individuals, wide range of disciplines, right? Absolutely, and that was intentional um, because when we talk about mothers, we go from one spectrum clear to another. And uh, what I wanted to make sure that we brought in those experiences in those diverse areas. Okay, and we'll get back in detail to that later on. Also, I noticed here at the church, 
there, even though you're not open for regular in congregation in the building, you guys have a high level of uh, social distancing and all the things that relates to safety here in the church. When I walk in, I see a thermometer, I see all of the hand sanitizers. We are distanced right here. I know if I wasn't properly distanced, Cheryl would get on me. And then, <laughs> hey, Cheryl will be wiping these mics down. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> Cheryl getting on you. Thanks for letting me have a little fun there. Uh, the, um, the general concept of racism, since systemic racism, uh, in our community uh, has just taken on a high level profile. When I say our community, locally and nationally, international, Pastor Glover, what you say? Well, absolutely. And um, of course, uh, the genesis of this most recent um, conversation was the uh, death of uh, George Floyd. Um, but how it's mushroomed across the country and the dialogue is taking place, federal, state, local, even community levels, uh, it seemed like a great time to have these conversations in a structured way. Uh, a lot of times people talk at each other, but they don't talk to each other. A lot of times people don't listen when they talk. And so we are promoting these symposiums as an opportunity for people to come and have a high level conversation. And I particularly like tonight because we're going to hear the African-American female voice and perspective on these issues. And I expect that we all will be sensitized and we all will learn a great deal. Right, and the whole idea, Cheryl, of bringing in a, a bunch of women to talk about racism, uh, some of them have children, some of them are gonna talk about their sons. Mm -hmm. That whole concept is really, when women are talking about it, it just, to me, it has an even deeper feeling uh, because our black women have always had that high level of being able to have in intuition. Absolutely. Like, what do you call it? Is it something in the Bible about woman and her intuition? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if that is necessarily in the Bible, yeah. but, but, there, but there is some, certainly a right. woman has great intuition. Yeah, they, sure. they do. Absolutely. Go ahead, Cheryl. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right because um, one of the things that I think we have that's a little different is because we are carriers of the kids, of the children. Mm. So we are, you know, there's a different investment that we, we come from. And that's because we, we want all of our children to win. We want them to get to their place, their best place. We want them to meet their, their destiny and their purpose. So when we talk about our children, it comes from a place that's so deep that you can't even describe it into words. Mm -hmm. So I think having the opportunity to, and I like the format that we're doing tonight because now is an opportunity for people to hear us. We need them to listen to us without waiting for a response like a general conversation. Mm -hmm. The whole idea um, of uh, going to you on this, Pastor Glover, having women out front talking, being heard, discussing, even right now it looks like it may be an African-American female as uh, the vice president's running mate, not finalized yet, but mm -hmm. I can't see him not being smart enough to do that. Women have always, like when you think about Coretta Scott King, you just talk about the women in the church. Just speak to the importance of the women in the church and they're having a voice. <laughs> That's a long question. Well, and, and the truth of the matter is um, we have great balance in our church. We have great balance between male leadership and female le leadership. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine our congregation without our female leadership. Mm -hmm. And I certainly cannot imagine our congregation without our female congregants. Mm -hmm. um, women bring so much value uh, in terms of their innate spirituality, but also their ability to nurture, to cover, uh, to help carry the burden, their reliability. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this church, this community is blessed with some phenomenal women. Mm -hmm. And that's part of my excitement because uh, this panel is an assembly of those women here. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, is I think just pausing and listening to a woman's perspective on these issues will, I think there's going to be a wisdom 
and an education that come forth that sometimes the male ego would not allow to happen. Right. Uh, I don't think the women are going to be jockeying and competing with each other. Mm -hmm. They're going to be educating, sharing, loving, and nurturing. Women interact with each other, relate to each other in a totally different way than men do. And so I think that there's, there's going to be some great learning tonight. All right. Well, this is just great. I'm going to get a chance to talk to you guys individually later. I want to thank you guys for sitting here for this moment to allow me to have both of you on camera because <laughs> usually one of you are supporting the other and you guys do a good job of being role models in that way. I watch how y'all you guys support each other and uh, we need to see uh, that as well and see it on camera like we're seeing it right now. So uh, we're going to go to a break and we come back. Uh, I'll, I'll kick it with, with, with uh, Pastor Glover. We'll be right back.